Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Oh, we're back. <laughs> John's like, what? Hi, That's, Betsy. That frightened me a little bit. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that. You were prepared. How are you guys doing? This is Greg Reitman. We're here at T-Radio V on the green carpet. I got an incredible, incredible group of people. Jonathan Blank, extraordinaire. Betsy Tassi, extraordinaire. Um, I don't know. You know, Normally, I would just say producer, director, writer, but I don't think of you guys in, in that category. I would just say artists and artists. You guys are just artists. Thank you. Um, yeah. And I was actually, I was going through your, your credits, and I was, like, looking at everything, and I was like, you know, we always were so used to, like, blocking everybody, and you guys are both authors. You go, you, how many movies have you made, Betsy? Well, I've made a lot. I don't, I don't know, like 40, 50, maybe. Wow. I mean, in my career. In your career? I'm old. It doesn't show that on your, <laughs> on your, on your, on your page. Well, I only you show, only show the, the ones that you I'm like. proud of. <laughs> <laughs> that I like, that I want you to know about. Yeah, exactly. And Jonathan, how many films have you made? Uh, four. Four. We'll come back to how many. I actually literally like Collecting America. It's Collecting America, right? Yeah. yeah. Collecting America. About America's obsession with baseball and money. And Love money. it. And money. Are you still making money off of Collecting America? Are you still collecting? <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes? Nice. I love that. So, Betsy, um, Sacred Cows, right? Yeah. How did that start? Sacred Cows. I, I, well, the book is called Tipping Sacred Cows. So really, it's about tipping the, the cows. You know, it started uh, because my life turned into a hot mess, which is normal, I suppose, for most of us at some point. When you say a hot mess, what do you mean? I mean, like, I just kind of blew it up. Like, my div- I moved. Oh, there we go. We actually can actually Look, see the book. that's my book, okay. Tipping Sacred Cows. Jenny McCarthy liked it. Oh, that's the Dr. Joe Dispenza one. And but who anyway. published it? Who was the publisher? Atria Simon, Simon & Schuster. Okay. So it's about, it's kind of just a really fun, I, I, I like to be fun and funny. So it's a really funny exploration into, like, what the hell it means to be spiritual and live a meaningful life. And it was written because, for me, because I had spent like 10 years being sort of some sort of spiritual know-it-all person, and then my life fell apart completely, and I had to re-examine what all of that stuff actually meant and how we make it really work in our lives. I don't want to get too personal. Cause, uh, you can get as personal no, as you no, want. No, it's no, all but, in the book. No, right? I, no I got that. It's no, all but, on her Facebook no, page. Yeah. <laughs> No, but you know, it's interesting when you say, like, your life was falling apart. You know, we, we call that, what, a midlife crisis? Like, what w- was it that actually occurred that I actually— I got divorced. Okay, there you I go. I moved from uh, Washington State back to California. Um, and I had been—I had two—I have still, actually, two beautiful kids. And so for about six years, I really didn't do much for my career. I just really focused on being a mom. So I had to get— back into my creativity and to finding out what it was that I wanted to do and what I wanted to do with my life and on top of that how I was going to support me and my kids which is kind of and crazy. I, you got beautiful kids I wish we had some photos I we know some I, photos try, of them. I know I try to adorable. not do that too much but and, and 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 I guess would you say like when you did what the bleep I mean what did that sort of take you on a whole different like what was it about that film that you feel like that's did, did that impact you making that book absolutely because what happened is that I mean it's funny after the bleep came out like it always baffled me I think some people need to be a little more discerning I, I was uh, like all of a sudden swept up into being speaking at like places with like 500 or a thousand people and like I opened for Deepak you know that's like at a conference once and I would sit back in the room before I would go on and I would think to myself do these people know that I used to produce porn and now I'm somehow <laughs> gonna like come out and tell them how to be enlightened like it was really funny to me but hold on hold on are you saying those 40 films we got some porn films absolutely in there? yeah <laughs> softcore you, softcore no, I, I, you're right softcore but still yeah. you know it's not was, overselling <laughs> I did some nasty stuff back then that you may not even know about. But, uh, uh, okay. you know, girls got to earn a living. I wasn't in them. Although this is a true story, which is really funny. <laughs> is this Betsy, talk- you're <laughs> actually, like, okay with all that. I'm t- I am. Listen, that's I'm That's totally, really great, though. No, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm totally I, fine with all that. And I think that's really cool because a lot of people want to hide, like, their, their, they, they want to keep their, what is it, the, the ghosts in the closet? They want the ghosts in the closet. They don't want to open My ghosts, my skeletons. Skeletons. The skeletons in the closet. Yeah. The in the closet. My skeletons are out the in the open. The ghosts they want to let out of the closet. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I'm cool. That's part of my new thing, and that's what I talk a lot about in my book. Is like I'm, I'm really tired of like hiding from my life and, and being ashamed because, you know, w- 
life is a real is a trip, right? You know, and we've done some crazy things, and ultimately we can do one of two things: we can hide from them and be freaked out by them and be embarrassed, and that usually is what causes illness and makes you really sick and hate your life. Or you can just go, "Wow, I'm amazed I made it through my 20s without a venereal disease or a drug addiction." That's awesome. Congratulations, Betsy. Yeah. I, see I, I killed someone, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> so just. Uh, if we're getting into a competition here. No, 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 no. I want to see if they can pull up the trailer for the book because I actually watched it and I thought it was really cool. Oh, so thank I've just you. queued them up on it's that. It's funny. I broke my collarbone making that trailer. Yeah, you know, I think, I mean, it seems like it was more like a Carthith. A Carthith? A Carthith? A type <laughs> book, it seemed like. I built here we go. a life based on my sacred cows, my beliefs about myself, my beliefs about the world, about spirituality, and about what it meant to live a meaningful spiritual life. And I realized it was a whole mess of cow shit. Happiness isn't a destination. (laughs) Happiness is a state of mind. Are you drinking the milk there? I am. It's my milk ad. They never came for me, though. Milk. Bastards. No, I think that's really great. And what I really liked about that when I watched it is just the simplicity of it. You know, everyone's like, oh, like, like, the complexity of like making a trailer. Why so short? I mean, the book's got to be what, 200, 150 yeah, pages? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty straight. I'm a straightforward kind of girl. And so I don't like to, you know, pussyfoot around. The, I don't like to tiptoe around the cow field, apparently. So, you know, I don't know. I just thought it was fun. The clip, there's one part in there. I, I don't know if you saw that one or there's another one where I go running and I leap on the cow and I try to tip him over. And, you know, I just like to be fun and funny and light. I think we take stuff way too seriously. And, and for sure, stuff in life should be, there's serious stuff in life. But I think. In this world that we got going on right now, everyone's a little freaked out. All we ever hear about is like global warming. The world's going to end. We're screwing up the planet. We're all going to die. Well, I mean, I don't know if you saw it, but we are bombing yeah, right now in, in, Isra- in Gaza and Israel. It's I mean, really tough I mean, it, shit I mean, going it's, on. I mean, Jonathan, that's where Jonathan and I met. We did a master's class program in Israel, and and you know, we used to think about like the whole. Jonathan, we call it like the fear state when we were there. They yeah. would all be like afraid. You no, know, they don't check their bags like every two minutes. And, and we still like, do that now. I just was. No, we don't check our bags walking into a mall. We well, would you know, go into I just a went, mall. You know what? I just went to a, uh, Universal Studios with my kids recently, and like literally, they had the stick out there, and they were popping through everything. And my Theme kids parks, were like, "Yes, why are they doing that, no, but, mommy? Because no, they're I, afraid we're gonna die in here. You know, it's like it's a little stressful. You know, it's a little weird. So, yeah. so there's enough of that out there. They do uh, that at their Halloween thing too, and it's soon as you walk in after they've checked your bags guys with uh chainsaws, chainsaws come come yeah, it's like, oh, this is great. so i just think like there's enough people out there that want to focus on the, the scary stuff i want to focus on the fact that you know what guess what we can be happy and if there's if we were think about this if we were all just a little bit more happier like we probably would be doing a little less bombing of gaza I would agree with that. So what is it like? What's the takeaway of the book? What was the purpose, the, the higher purpose of the book? The higher purpose of the book really is that, you know, happiness isn't a destination. It's a state of mind. It's a choice. And to really, you know, we, we get bombarded with a lot of how to's. Like every time I turn, I write for Huffington Post and I write for Modern Mom and I write for another couple blogs. And they always want me to do like, please do a blog that's like five steps to happiness. And, and we're always looking for that, like these fixes. And the truth is like, you can do all of those things, but ultimately at the end of the day, I don't care if you walk around with a crystal shoved way up your booty. In the end of the day, it just really is about choosing happiness. And when you say choosing happiness, I mean, I always feel like, you know, like you wake up in the morning, you're happy or you're sad. It's, I feel like it's almost like... Yeah, but ha- see, the people keep confusing. In my opinion, we confuse our emotional state with, our, with, with peace. And I would so, agree with that. Yes. So I can be sad. I have days where I'm like sad about something, but that doesn't mean impede. That you, that doesn't mean that you're depressed. It doesn't mean that that changes my f- foundation of peace or happiness. It's like you know, I love the fact that part of big, my my sacred cows around spirituality is this idea that emotions, like you know, being angry, is somehow become wrong, and you're bad if you have a negative thought. You know, that's just crazy talk. Like I can't even keep up with that shit. So I just decide, you know what? I'm going to be where I'm at. I'm going to be in my emotional state. But at the end, at the end that emotional state does not change my my foundation my 
higher state, if you want to call it, of happiness and peace. One quick question, because we're going to cut to commercial, yeah. but I want to know, is the book written for women or is it written for men? Who you know, is it written? It was who, is written it, who is it really written for? It, it, I wrote it, I thought, for women, but a lot of men have read it and actually really think it's fun and like it. And and I, and so that I was kind of surprised by that, because my main audience is obviously women. And, and oddly enough, my main audience, I thought I was writing for sort of younger women and sort of women in their early 30s and maybe 40s who you know were thinking about getting married. But f I'm surprised to find that a lot of older women really like it too, you know, in their 50s and 60s. Because so. maybe they're not happy. That's interesting. Yeah. You know. I loved it. See? Jonathan liked it. <laughs> and how old are you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan kidding. doesn't age because he's an alien. I'm don't kidding. You know I'm he kidding. really it's is. The we're going to cut to commercial. This is Greg Reitman. We're on the green carpet with Jonathan Blank and Bessie Jazzy. Don't miss this show. This is great. Peace. I'm Dean Kane, and you are watching T Radio V. I'm watching it too. Right now. Seriously. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Laura Somoza. I'm Sterling Gardner. And we are Between the Sheets every Monday here, 3 p.m., tradiov.com. T Radio V. That's right. It's T Radio V. Radio in T. That face. <laughs> she wants to see our hands. That's radio. N T V. Wah, 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 wah. We're not a couple. <laughs> Dragon Gate. Is that what it's called? Something? Secrets of Dragon Gate. Secrets of... And then where, where did the... Oh, so I'm going to slow down. Secret of a Dragon Gate. Secrets Se of... Dragon Gate. Dragon Gate singular. Got it. And, and, and what was the inspiration Gate. behind the book? Well, I have been studying Taoism for a long time. I started in uh, college. My The university I went to had a very famous Taoist practitioner teaching Tai Chi and Taoism. I, yeah, I really wanted to see this. Thank, yeah. thank you for guys pulling yeah. this up. There's I actually the cover. love Secrets the of cover. Dragon Gate. I was yeah. hoping to get my book today and get it signed, but hopefully we'll get you back on the show Absolutely. and you can, you can bring me a book. Absolutely. I was really excited. And who did your cover art? Penguin you? uh, hired this guy, uh, 
Penguin, the publisher, okay, uh, hired someone, and I, yeah, I really love it too. Yeah, I was happy they yeah. did something cool. Like and what that. was the inspiration behind the book, John? Well, I have been studying Taoism for many years, and, and I started in New York, and then I moved to Los Angeles. And out here, I met a really fascinating character who was a lineage holder in the Dragon Gate School of Taoism. Taoism is uh, originally a philosophy from China that goes back 5,000 years. And it divided into many different schools. Uh, like each sects one, or school? Well, sect is uh, more of a religious term, but a, a school because uh, Taoism is really a philosophy. So there are different schools that focus on different aspects. Of the da of Taoism? Of Taoism. And, and, how, many and how many schools? Hundreds. Uh, because it would, any family lineage could start their own school. And, but uh, maybe there are 30 main ones. Okay. Uh, There's the Tao Pu as an example. What's the Tao no. Pu? <laughs> <laughs> That's a, actually a very famous book, and it's uh, how most people know about Taoism is from the book Tao of Pu. Okay. And it's uh, got a picture of Winnie the Pooh on the cover, and it makes it very accessible to people because everyone loves Winnie the Pooh. Of course. Um, so I met this teacher. His name is Dr. Steve Liu. He lives here in Los Angeles. And where does he live? Out in Temple City. Uh, is which he the is guy that you sent me out to yes, go exactly. meet Yes, exactly. You did acupuncture with, with him. With Dr. Yeah. Lu, yeah. And he was a lineage holder in a Dragon Gate Taoism. Fascinating guy. We should have had a photo of Dr. Lu. Yeah. Oh, and <laughs> uh, Dragon Gate focuses a lot on the mystical aspects of Taoism, mysticism and magic. When you and say I, mysticism, what are we talking about? Well, that's where you're more focused on the idea that uh, you are creating your reality with your thoughts, your will, and your focused intent. Okay. And by doing different rituals, you can harness those abilities and develop them even further. And so they so have the, things these, like on, feng shui. Are they, are they like mantras? Like what you're doing? They like do have that. They do have spoken uh, methods can, can for Can you give me focusing. a couple examples? Well, uh, Dr. Liu actually has, a, uh, has one that I've never seen anybody else do, but he assigns people numbers based on their birthday. And... The Dragon Gate School is very into astrology and creating birth charts for people. And I find all that stuff very fascinating, but personally, it doesn't, I don't make it a part of my life and my practice because I like to believe that uh, if you create your own reality, then the day you're born on shouldn't matter that much ultimately. And it's I know almost that, like, uh, it's almost like, kind of like everything sort of like destined in a certain way unless you created the reality that you were born on that date in which case <laughs> well then. yes they do go back before you're born <laughs> and they certainly believe that i yogananda in his uh book uh, autobiography of a yogi i love that book. he talks yeah. about how when he was uh learning astrology that he made it a point to try to do things on days when it was not supposed to be auspicious to do things. And what he wrote was that he could always do them. They might be more challenging, but he could still accomplish them. And, may, and I think that that's really what it comes down to, is that we flow in cycles. Some days you feel healthier and more energetic than other days. Some days you feel smarter or more on the ball than other days. Uh, we and have biorhythms. And there you're saying something is we're just slow and we just want to get to bed and like exactly. that's part of the so flow, right? If you learn, and, and a key point of Taoism is to learn how to flow with nature. Ah. And so when you see, when you feel like you're in the groove, take advantage of that. Do what flows in that groove and get the most out of it. And by learning how to listen to your own mind and your own body that's and following your own patterns and rhythms, you can optimize your chances for success and for happiness. And what have you? And what was what was your inspiration? Why did you want to do the book? I just think that it's incredible information, and I love spreading it out to the world. Do you feel like? Because I went online, and you've done a lot of talk shows and presentations and public speaking. I mean, what, what's the what's the the biofeedback. What, 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 what are people saying after they... After they, after they uh, after people they, love it. Why it, do they love it, though? Well, I think because it's very accessible. And there are a lot of people out there, uh, and I think Betsy is very into this herself with her whole idea of spiritual porn and making... We're going to get making, back to that spiritual <laughs> porn. <laughs> making that which is... You know, there are a lot of I'm people... trying to keep the carpet clean just so you know today. <laughs> I'm trying. It's just a figure of speech, Greg. There are a lot of people out there that make a living by 
portraying themselves as having uh, keys to a secret door that only they can open and you need to hire them in order to gain access to what's behind that door. Don't you hate that? And, yeah. and my feeling is that the, in, uh, you know, the truth is within us. And that is the key point of Taoism. The key core idea of Taoism is that each and every one of us is a microcosm of the universe. And by going within, we can discover the nature of the universe because we are the universe. We are the universe. It's so, his uh, I mean, I, I just want to interrupt and say, your book, his book, like, really takes this idea of Taoism, which for a lot of people, I mean, first of all, it starts with a T, and we, we say it with a D. So immediately there's this sense of, like, well, I'm not going to understand that. That's just a weird, weird, weird shit that I can't figure out. And, and what you do in your book so beautifully is you just make it so easy and so accessible and not so uh, so mystical that I, as just a regular mom or, you know, just a mom or work, working Joe, what do they call that guy, Joe, plumber, Bob or Joe whatever, the Joe the plumber, can really get it. And really, and it's such a beautiful, Taoism is so great because you don't need all this stuff necessarily. And, and when you read his book, you go, oh, I can live this. I can actually do this. What is, give me an example, Jonathan. Like, give me a takeaway that someone like okay, reads your yeah. book. They read like the first chapter, the first year. What, what, what are they going to take away from it? Breathe. Mm. So the essence of Taoism is breathing. And... And most people breathe incorrectly. And in fact, in our society, in Western society, America, we don't teach people how to breathe. So unless you're an athlete, for instance, a uh, dancer, someone who is really uh, a, a physical, uh, you make your life by doing something physical, you are never taught how to breathe. And it's the core skill that people need in order to function. So if you're getting a lot less oxygen, for instance, every all systems in your body are going to be functioning at a lower level. Now I want to know, know how to breathe. Yeah, well, you breathe to your abdomen. That's and and the key thing is when relaxing. You say, like, I'm like in here. You yeah, mean, and then come on up. Well, most and, then, and most of us breathe up here, right? Yeah, most breathe people breathe. My, I breathe through here, though. Well, yeah, you breathe you through your nose. Yeah, of course. But I don't. Most people. The thing is, is you're always breathing with your lungs, of course, <laughs> right? Because that's what we use to breathe. But when the Taoists say breathe with your abdomen, what they're saying is that by expanding your belly, and if you see a baby when a baby breathes, their belly goes in and out, because they're breathing naturally. And as they grow up, they, their breath moves higher and higher into their chest. And so if, by breathing with your abdomen, what you're doing is expanding the abdomen, and you're allowing your lungs to fill completely, and you're getting more air. Can I see this? Can we actually see you actually breathe properly? I want to see this. Uh, I don't like, think you'll see it. I wonder, like, am I going with my stomach here? Like, breathe, you know? think, think, of, <laughs> think yeah. of breathing through your nose to your belly button. That's what I was thinking, like what I'm doing right now. Yeah, and, and you want and to. Then, uh, wow, so it's almost like you're going all the way down your channels, and then you're coming on up, and you do yeah. that in a, in a like in a in a in a rhythmic way, like in a time period way. Well, like two the, minutes, a you should there, be intervals? doing that all the time. All the time. You should always be breathing that way, and you'll see when you get upset, your breathing gets shallower and shallower oh, and shallower. Of course. And so if you're getting into uh, uh, an al uh, an altercation or a combative mode your breathing gets shallower. And one way to immediately relax yourself is to remember to breathe deeply. And immediately you'll be brought back to a deeper state of consciousness, a more relaxed state of consciousness. Now, it's easy to say and it's a lot harder to do. Of course, but I mean, when I mean, you practice, my stomach is contracting as I'm doing this. I'm when like, you practice, uh, well, you really to practice you should loosen your belt. Okay, to make yeah. it easier yeah, for yourself. Yeah, because I have yourself. my belt on right now. Because and, I've been okay. And, uh, you know, s and how you sit in the chair can make it easier. I personally like to do my meditation standing up. I do standing meditation. And that makes it even easier to breathe deeply. So when, when God, what an incredible journey. Like when you, when, you, when you were with Dr. Lou, right, and you finished the book, what was, what was that moment for you? What did you feel after you, after you, you, know, you got your first copy of the book? Well, that is a great feeling. You know, it's uh, like giving birth, I guess. I've never given birth. Well, but, uh, hang on, hang on <laughs> I knew Betsy was going to give me a hard time about that one. No, but I mean, it's it a, is. It's I'll a give it to giving you. birth. You know, yeah. you work long and hard, and then you see it come to life. No, but I mean, like, do you get, like, like um, a deeper appreciation when people come to you and they read the book? I mean, what, what, I mean like, that point where, you, where you're actually going out 
and you're sharing this wisdom, what are you getting from that, Jonathan? You're getting the nothing? The knowledge <laughs> that I, I'm doing something to help make the world a better place. Right. Okay. And I and actually... Do you feel like, I mean, if people... Because what you're talking about, I think, feels... I mean, and you probably wrote it in a very simple way, right? I haven't read the book yet, but, but if anyone can read it, like The Common Layman? Absolutely. That's, I think that's the Absolutely. beauty of his book. Excuse me, but I think that's the beauty of his book is that a lot of this stuff, people become afraid to read it because they think, oh, I can't do that. I won't have the time to do it, and <clears throat> I, don't ha I won't understand it. You're not completely We've got to cut, cut to commercial. Unbelievable. I think you have too many commercials, Greg. <laughs> yeah. We'll be back. Oh, rude. <laughs> this is T-Radio Viewer on the Green Carpet with Jonathan Blank and Betsy Jassy. Right on. Peace. Peace out. <laughs> Join Dave Navarro and friends for Dark Matter, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. on T-Radio V. Right, Dave Navarro here, Dark Matter Radio, T-RadioV.com. The universe is mask, enormous, huge, full of stars, planets, and matter. Some of the matter is so dense that not even light escapes. <laughs> Get on the mic, get, get on the mic, get, get on the mic, get on the mic, Frank! Pardon me, sir, pardon my reach. <laughs> See, and you guys were worried. I think this is going great. <laughs> pardon my reach? Get the f away from me, dude! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are really beautiful. Oh, Thanks, you guys. He's one of the most beautiful people I've ever known. This is pretty much every week. He brings in a guest that tells him how beautiful he is. Pardon my reach? If you have to reach over me, then don't do it! He is the straightest <laughs> gay guy I know. Dave Navarro signing off. Dark Matter. Thank Good you night. for listening. Bye. Dark Matter with Dave Navarro. Wednesdays at 9 p.m. on T Radio V. T Radio V. What did you play opposite Andy, Eric? Do you remember? Uh, Andy and I worked as uh, two employees at a network. Okay. Oh, you're and forgetting the other I, thing. I played, I played, I played a news anchor, and he played a reporter. Okay, but the other thing you did, the thing you did on the Andy Dick show, who did you play to Andy? Oh, uh, is is that play my sister? You played his wife, Denise. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you played his wife. Yeah. So you what's wrong with that, Eliza? Yeah. Nothing's wrong with it. He's got it's a great just, range as an actor. It, you know? Yeah, it just was funny. Encounters with Eric and Eliza Roberts, Wednesdays from 2 to 4 p.m. on T Radio V. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. This is the theme song for my book. Well, we're back. <laughs> and then the days go by. And when the days go by. Because it's like, how did I get here, right? Like, don't I wake up every morning and I'm like, whoa, how did I get here? See, what I think is fascinating, though, between the two of you, I know you guys have, have lineage together, which is really beautiful, but, you know, here you've got male, female, and you've got these, like, books that really pretty much, I would almost say this, the, the theme is about finding your happiness right and there's and there's so many paths right, right. and it's almost like what i was trying to That's get what your movie's about too right? yeah my movie is about that but what's interesting is about like you know what brought you i guess the, the underneath i was trying to get jonathan to want to write this book was there something in your life that you felt that you needed to, to get out did you have to go through your own taoism it's i you know i think that there are a lot of uh spiritual beliefs out there that personally I don't think are that healthy for people and I think <laughs> that's Taoism a very, that's a very open basically statement basically Jonathan <laughs> thinks he's right no, I'm just kidding well uh, nobody's right no but, right. Nobody's but, no, but you no, and different I do. people no, get no, different but you paths, resonated but to this idea of Taoism and I want to understand like what was it was there something going on that you were searching Taoism's extremely simple Taoism uh, applies to everybody Taoism is non-sectarian and it focuses a lot on health and longevity and things that everybody wants. You know, our uh, society's very obsessed with health 
and Taoism actually has a, a program for optimizing health. So, and, and, you know, like the way I thought it was great in your movie how you discussed that health is part of peace, right? It that is. if you're sick, it's hard to be at peace, right? I, okay. it, it makes it a lot more challenging. Very challenging. The Taoists <laughs> knew that thousands of years ago, and they said that, you know, the, in the Tao Te Ching, Lao Tzu says, um, you know, a, uh, a working hinge gathers no rust. And a working so hinge, hinge gathers so no like dust. Like the hinge on a uh, rust. I got gotcha. you. So the hinge on a door, when it's working, there's no rust on it. But you let that hinge sit, and over time it's going to develop rust, and eventually you're not even going to be able to open that door anymore. And the idea is that you have to stay active, and you have to take care of your body. And I like very much that as a spiritual belief system, they integrate the mind health. and body and the health part yeah, yeah no it's really interesting that people don't really correlate that health is peace that is the way you know what I mean and it's a big well, I part I it think that people part. don't correlate I think that people just don't well I think for a long time in our culture you know we've got we've gone way outside of ourselves for a really long time you know we're a very consumer driven culture we're a very you know collect uh, or an attached in, society we're an attached society and it's been that way you know since probably i would say and i'm not the greatest history but but maybe after world war one you know it got re it got, there was yeah. a lot of cultural the, the shifts that the occurred industrial revolution the and cars and ford and manufacturing and everything. yeah and the and whole consumerism and the commercials and blah 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 and i think why you asked maybe why you know why white the books now i think it's because for a long time, people have been really searching for ways. And we kind of do this crazy pendulum swing, you know, where for a long time it was very religious and very dogmatic. And then the, the sort of spiritual revolution kind of came really with the 60s. I mean, there was lots of stuff before, but really it hit the West back then. And then people kind of went way over here. And, and really the end of the day, they got into crystals and like Jonathan was saying, all sorts of spiritual practices that, that have a lots of, called the dog and pony show. There's lots of bells and whistles and things. And, at the, and I think what humanity is looking for now is a sort of simplicity of it. Well, that's what I'm saying. He said it so. He said it so eloquently. It's like it's simple. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like you know. What I mean, I think that's what's so great. I want to come back. First of all, I'm so excited to read your book. Just so you know, I mean, I'm so like super inspired. You know about it. I'm. I, and then where can we? Where can people buy the book? Well, it's at Amazon and Barnes and Noble, and it's in bookstores. And can they buy it? What's the web? Can we do a little uh, URL? If you plug? go to secretsofdragongate.com, you can buy it. Okay, you can. It links right to Amazon. Okay, and if they yeah. email you, they get a discount if they see it on the show. Uh, you know, I don't. Uh, I don't control. <laughs> Unfortunately, Penguin did not offer me any opportunity to do that. I would love to. Guys, do so that. you don't have any promotion. Next book. Yeah. Is there another book coming? Uh, I'm working on a book right now about the greatest endurance sailor of all time. I know I saw that. We'll come back to that for yeah. another show. But I want to come back to you. got a movie. <laughs> I do. you got a movie coming out. What's the name of the movie? I have a movie out. It's called Song of the New Earth. Song of the New Earth. I hope they're going to pull up the trailer because I want to see this trailer. What yeah. was the inspiration, Betsy, behind this film? Well, I have to be, I, you know, I'm just a producer on this movie. So just the producer. I love really it. Really, <laughs> it came from a wonderful guy named uh, Ward Serrells, the director, with his wife, Sophie. Um, and they, you know, it's funny, they were on a journey to make another movie, which often happens, and they met Tom Kenyon, who is the, 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 the person who's featured in the film. Tom Kenyon is an amazing sound healer. And they met him, and they ended up going on a journey with him, and it's a really beautiful little film about sound healing and the power of sound. All right, here we go. Let's see this. But the whale sounds come through me. My mother was a circus elephant rider. In between the acts, the big band would play and she'd sing. So that's where my voice came from. Oh Spirits can come through my voice. Sometimes I'm like a chauffeur and I look in the back seat to see who I'm driving at the moment. I'm a neo-pagan, Taoist, Tibetan Buddhist, quantum physicist, mystic. <laughs> I rolled into some strange amalgam. Morning of my 40th birthday, I had an encounter that was totally unexpected. Will you sing the song of the new earth? They said they came from another universe. They said to me, we're going to take you through a major initiation. I said, well, you're going to have to take me to the mat. I'm not going to participate with you. I'm not even going to freaking meditate this morning. And the hole opened up underneath me. And this voice said, now it is time. He's opened doors I never even imagined. 
That was the first time my brain state had been altered by sound. My earth went from flat to round. The brain research shows that when you are experiencing pure sound without language, the right side of the brain lights up like a Christmas tree. Sound opens consciousness. If consciousness is higher, the planet will change. We're creating the world by how we speak to each other. The words we choose, the tonality that we choose. The entire human collective is in our dark night of the soul right now. A knowledge and an intelligence will sing through my voice. And new solutions will come forward for us to change the course of our history. The ancient traditions, they all speak to it. From the smallest subatomic particle to the largest galaxies. It began with sound. Now you see why I was so excited to have you on the show. Both yeah. of you. I just, I'm super, super excited. This is just awesome. I mean, like when I saw that trailer, I was like... It's a really, I mean, it's a profoundly beautiful film. The funny thing that I, I do now when I'm out with the film is that it's the first movie that I've ever been involved with where I'm really excited when people are closing their eyes in the theater because they're having a real transformative experience. It's Ward and the, the gentleman who edited, a guy named Eric Froth, um, just really created a beautiful film. And my favorite, I mean, I love movies. I'm a movie freak. Junkie. To movie junkie. <laughs> like, you, 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 know, you know, your movie... Th this movie, you know, these are not like preachy, proselytizing films. These I are just hate true. I hate that movies. stuff. You know, this is really, this is a guy's, you, you wanted to know what Jonathan's journey was. You wanted to know what my, how did we get to where we go? This guy has the most beautiful, amazing journey to how he came to where he is, and that's what we were able to explore in the film. And you did it so authentically. You know, that's the thing that, like, you know, you see these characters, you don't want to, you know, right. preach. But I, when I saw it, I was like, where can I see the movie? So right now the movie is all over. It's popping up all over the place. Um, if you go to songofthenewearth.com and click... Was, you said it was in Ashland, right? It was just in Ashland. It's coming to, I know for sure, Portland, Seattle, Costa Rica, Minneapolis. I mean, it's all over the place right now. So how does that work, Betsy? Like when you say it's just popping up, are theaters actually calling you and wanting to place it's the a, movie? It's a mixture of both. We, you know, I, we are doing a little hybrid distribution and can be booked into theaters or people can do their own screenings if they go to the website songofthenewearth.com so they're doing community based and click screenings on, yeah and click on screenings you can host your own screening you know, I had someone who called me up I had a guy named Jim Stoner not, um, out in uh, Fordham University he's like I want to take your movie and I want to show it to all these faculty members like, right. do you charge them for that? you know we do a little bit because how much do you charge them? It depends on the. Th you have to go to the website and look it okay. up. There's like one that's. A, it, it depends. I mean, there's anywhere from fifty bucks up to like five hundred bucks. Do you believe it? You think that's a good? I'm just curious. Yeah, you can. You like that type of marketing. You know why? Here's the thing. Mo this movies like this. You know, I'd rather pay to see a movie like this, and maybe even. And I, I don't mind paying for the big movies too. You know, Tom, um, Ward and Sophie pretty much through crowdfunding and through money of their own paid to make this movie. Okay. And they're paying for the distribution to make this, to get this movie out. So when you know, this is how we get movies like this out. I go on a rant on this all the time because people come to me and they'll say, you know, this information should be free. You know, they'll say to me, why isn't Jonathan's book free and why isn't your book free? And I always say because you got. Excuse me, I'm, I almost said the f word. But you, you know, people have got Fuck. their people have got their <laughs> oh, then I'll say it. People have got their values completely fucked up. You know, we'll spend five bucks a day on a mocha. But you have you want to quabble about spending ten bucks to go see a movie that's potentially okay. going to tell you how to be happy? Or it took four years of your life? Or well, not even paid that. Everybody? All that is stuff. That's true too. All of that is true. This is how I earned my living. But think of it like this: if you had a choice between buying a mocha and getting information on how you could live a happy, peaceful life, what are you going to choose? Well, we don't think of it that way. But the a mocha. lot of but, but you <laughs> the mocha. <laughs> a lot of people choose you the know, mocha. You're, you know, but it's interesting though. You know, I, I I every day I get my Starbucks coffee. I put it on the show and I get my tea. Do they pay you for that shit? Well, they should. it's funny, but they actually they used to overcharge. You yeah. Because I get a large with one tea bag and normally they charge two forty five. And I turn around and say, you know what? 
the part of this they're charging me the extra 60 cents is for the water. Right. So they turn and they go, you're right. It's only supposed to be a dollar ninety five for a small. So every time I come in, they know. They say, Mr. Wright, but no problem. We have. We, well, that's we, nice. But, but, you know. But, you know, even I asked them, I said, are you getting ready to leave Starbucks? Like, we can't wait. I go, you know, I mean, like, they're, like, they're, like, they're slaves. You ever see what's inside like that? <laughs> we don't even think about the mocha. I think that's the problem. We're right. not even thinking about the mocha. We, we have get, our values we fucked just, up. No, we wake up in the morning. We well, just, we've we have, also, no, we have an expectation. We have an expe- yeah, we have now a building. Now where we are viewing information as something that should be free. Unbelievable. Right. I'm so sorry. They're cutting us to commercial. <laughs> Tell them to stop, Greg. Don't <laughs> Aren't control you the man? Them. Are you the I right the man? man? <laughs> These guys are out of control. They're taking over. No, we got, we're going to come Speaking back. Speaking of consumerism, here you go. <laughs> here they go. Exactly. No problem. This is Greg Reitman. We're on T-Radio V with Jonathan Blank and Betsy Chase. Peace. Hey, hello, hello, this is David Faustino, and you are watching T Radio V. Do you see what I'm saying? It's television crossed with radio. It's all together. It's weird. Radio's in the middle of it. Ah, it's amazing. You're watching it. Go. Love and marriage, love and marriage. Hey, Cosmo here, inviting you to join me every Saturday, 11 a.m. PST, for another boozy rendition of Historic Holes. We uncover the history and the mystery, the dirt and details, and even some facts and figures behind your favorite drinking establishment. That could be a corner pub, a rickety saloon, an infamous bar or tavern. It's been around so long, it's bound to be a fire hazard. They are all historic holes. From coast to coast and beyond, I'll be joined by actors, comedians, musicians. I even had a plumber on once. That's Historic Holes. I'm your host, Johnny Cosmo, every Saturday at 11 a.m. PST, right here at the future of online broadcasting. T, Radio V, and that's radio in TV. Let's get digital, Wednesday, 6 p.m., on T Radio V L A. Crazy Bone would never do this. <laughs> well, <I> guess <laughs> Hi, this is Slim Jim Phantom, and you got the big beat. We're gonna take this music into the twenty second century. We deal exclusively in rockabilly music. Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Richie Valens, Wanda Jackson, Janice Martin, the Everly Brothers, Johnny Cash, and everybody else. Thank you so much for supporting the Big Beat here on T Radio V. Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. I just want to say, you guys rock. Greg and what's your name, bud? Awesome. Every <laughs> that guy you. that you don't know. <laughs> every week they just make everything work. I just love them. I love the show. Mario, wherever you are, my my intern who's been with me for whatever, you're awesome. Jonathan He's still your intern, but he's been with you forever. <laughs> no, 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 Get their kidding. names and give them a little shout out here. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. We could, yeah, they're they're adorable yeah. too. I like that. I always, I, I oftentimes go into these studios and it's just me and a bunch of guys. No, no, no. Let's uh, oh, let's gonna come back though. I want to say a couple yeah, things. First of, all, first of all, first of all, slow down. You made a comment that you said Starbucks is progressive. I just want to clear the air here. So I don't no, have no. I I didn't don't say don't twist what I said. I said among the big corporations. Among the corp- but here's yeah, here's the, here's the deal. I'm on, he has I'm, a rant. I got my rant. My rant is they're now not allowing writers. If you're I writing, I've seen that. It's. It, I'll forward you yeah, it. Yeah. If you now go into Starbucks and turn your laptop on and you want to write in a Starbucks cafe, they're kicking out the writers. How do they do that? Like because, because they, what they're saying is that writers come in, they don't pay any money to Starbucks, they take the sugar for free, they ask for water for free, and they're not making any money. Well, that's so okay. Howard, hang on so a second. So Howard Schultz turns hang on. around and says, "Hang on, wait a second. I'm going to throw. I'm going to argue with you for a second. Okay. I think it's okay 
that Starbucks says, if you come into my establishment and don't buy a coffee, you want to just sit there for free, you can't do that. I'm okay with that. I think that's fair. Okay, because you know what? They're paying the rent. They're paying the employees. They're paying for the internet that you're getting to use for free. So, so if when you said the thing before and you said they can't write in there, I was like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. But I agree with them. I don't them. know, actually. I didn't really. Okay. I didn't really go. Here's the headline: Starbucks bans <laughs> screenwriters from all 19,435 locations worldwide. Oh, but I guess book writers are okay. Yeah, book writers. <laughs> Are generally better than <laughs> the truly we are. I mean, the point and about and some of does both. The point Apparently, of, screenwriters don't buy coffee, no, but often do. And if you keep reading mm. through it, the thing about the WGA, the WGA didn't even comment back about it. They just kind of like you have to know the facts. Like, is are they? Because this is an important distinction. Because here's one thing. I don't. Are I'm sure a rancher. This isn't a joke. No, yeah. it's not. <laughs> I don't know. Because no, this you, has to be a joke. This, right? it's, it's not it's a joke. It's a joke. It's not a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. It it's is. a total joke. It's a joke. You gotta go to yeah. Snopes. You gotta go to Snopes. <laughs> what is it? Snopes.com. Snopes. Yeah, yeah, because this is a joke. You couldn't ban. <laughs> how do you know? Screenwriters. Okay, I would. I would. How would you know the difference? <laughs> okay, and here's the kicker. Yeah. It says they did a study, uh, and they said they that screenwriters also have a depressing and desperate air about them <laughs> that spoils everyone else's experience. You got snoped, Greg. Yeah, you got you got, you got fooled, snoped. Greg. Snoped? Yeah, really? I'm sorry. Man. So I'm, I'm sorry. reading that thing, so I show up in the morning. You, you get all high I show, up in the, I show up in the morning at Starbucks, and I tell them, I go, you're going to get all the screenwriters. like, oh, my God. They go, are corporations doing that? And they're like, <laughs> and, they, and their faces <laughs> just changed, you know? Because they're all screenwriters. You know, we, should do, all we <laughs> should do a snoop now every week for our show that's actually a cool idea yeah. thank you for that one I'm going to do that that's, 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 that's okay. it but you Would know you what you brought up an interesting point I'm just going to take over your radio show for a second because it's important because you brought <laughs> up a really interesting point which I think is the thing about value which is why we got on that conversation and yes. it's important to me because it's something I've been thinking about in my own life lately is like what do I value what do I value? The What's important? Or the, or you the know, movie. So in in but the thing is it goes it doesn't get to go both ways. So like if that were really true and Starbucks had said, look, they come in and they don't buy anything, I would agree with them. Because then what the person who's sitting in Starbucks not not you you know, buying at least a coffee or spending a buck or whatever, they're saying to you, you know, I'm more va I'm valuable, I don't value you, I'm gonna use your space and I'm not gonna honor you for it. And that's really the to me the spiritual principle that I live by. It's like I'm gonna honor what I get what I value and I'm gonna honor it in all the ways that I can, okay. either with money okay. or with time. All right, Betsy, so let me ask you the question. So when you go get your coffee at Starbucks or your mocha, do you actually thank the person? Absolutely, because the, here's what there I believe. There you go. Got it. That's great. Absolutely. There, you know what? A really great friend of That's mine great. said something to me. This is really powerful. A guy that I know named Freeman Michael said to me, he's, he's a really great writer, and he said that whenever he pays for anything, he says thank you. Yeah, of course. Because basically money is essentially your, th your gratitude. And we have this whole crazy thing about money right now in the world, and we have our, our whole value system about money is really screwed up. And we're paying football. This is a simple way to look at it. You're paying football players a gazillion dollars a year, and you're paying teachers nothing. That's like the big argument. But it's true. How about basketball and well, baseball? Well, worse than the <laughs> athletes are the investment bankers. Yeah, absolutely. Really, they're the worst well, of Absolutely. Everyone. Look, you can drive down. You can see Chase Bank on every corner Ex of the block. I mean, right. look, the ba I mean. The whole it's gotten out of hand. It's out of hand. I mean, look, everything is... But that's is why people are looking... That's why simplicity is so important now. Because every, I think most of... At least it, most of the people that I meet... And I, I'm talking about like even regular moms that I, I drop my kid off at school. People that aren't, quote, green or spiritual or any of that stuff. They're just regular people trying to like get, uh, get on with their lives. They're looking for the same thing. They're looking for, like, how do I reduce my my consumerism how do I create a more simple life for myself how do I find the value in that I'm really and value and meaning in my life yeah let me just really about this the, is a point that I make in the book and, and whenever I teach or give a do a speaking gig I make this point and because I've studied meditation for a long time from a lot of different people many different styles and it's typically presented as something that's very difficult to do and requires incredible dedication. And the thing is that it, that's partially true, but it really doesn't tell the whole story. And when people come to my class, I start them off doing three minutes of meditation. And they all say, but three minutes, that's nothing. And I say, 
do three minutes because you're going to be able to do three minutes. When someone starts you off trying to do 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes of meditation, you can't do it. Or the vast majority of people really can't do it because it's challenging. Everyone I've ever tried has been able to do three minutes of meditation. Well, like the same and thing. then it's they have like, that experience yeah. of success. Right. And then from that experience of success, they can build. Well, I also think, the, I, I, more I, I think the crux of what's what I love about what this conversation is really about, it's about finding your inner happiness. Yeah. And, and it's really about like what we each go through. Like you had a bottom point where you realize like your cow tipped, like you just needed to change your world. And, mm -hmm. you know, you went through an experience and you wrote a book. I don't know what your cow tipped. I'm still trying to figure that out. Like what made you Jonathan write your book? Jonathan has been Zen f as far as long as I've known Jonathan. He's been I know zen. I met him in Israel. He's still Zen. <laughs> I mean, did you, did My you cow can stand on one leg. No problem. <laughs> I'd like to see that cow. It's I'd like to a tip cow. it, baby. <laughs> so, so this film is going to pop up. Where? When's the DVD coming? The out? DVD comes out in November, and it's going to okay. be a really cool, full. Like, there's going to be a soundtrack. It's just a really amazing. Because you've got some great sounds. Yeah, on it's there. awesome movie. I'm stupid. Stupor. I'm stupor. I'm super stoked about it. And if people want to find stoked. out about you, we can go to www. www.betsychassie.net. And what about you, Jonathan? Where can we find you? www.jonathanblank.com. That's J O N A T H A N B L A N K.com. You know, I just and uh, Betsy and I are working on a movie here, and so yeah. maybe you'll get involved too, Greg. You know, well, let's I, make a movie. I, yeah. Yeah. I know. I read yeah. the script. I like the script. You know, I'm. Uh, I know, I know, I know. All right. Gotta yeah, we want to get that movie made. Gotta yeah. get you know, the money. Gotta get the honey. You know, I know. The, the, it's not. It's just about the cool thing about the movie is it's kind of a conglomeration or or a, I don't know what the right word is a combination of sort of Jonathan and I. I loved your script. And, I read it. It's and it's brilliant. cool because you know we're not too far off. At the end of the day, really, at the end of the day, everybody just wants to find happy. And I I sort of interchange happy with peace, but we just want to find our peace. And so you know. There's a, there's really simple ways to do that. So what's the name of that movie going to be? Zentropy. It is Zentropy, not the what's the other one? Well, Killing Buddha was the Killing name that Buddha. I had. But Jonathan, I, like I like Buddha. Killing Buddha. But Jonathan you know, said if I'm the producer, we're going to have to bring it back. I love Killing Buddha. We'll fight Buddha. over it. All right, we'll go after well, Buddha. Let's, you know, we'll mud wrestle. We'll have a meditation contest. You. No, we'll mud wrestle. I'll take you guys down. You guys, oh, wow. I want to thank you both personally. Betsy Chassie, you're amazing. Thank Jonathan you. Blank, you're awesome. This is Greg Reitman. We're on the green card. At T Radio V. Thank you for having us on, Thank Greg. You. Thank you. Thank Every you, Every Tuesday at 2 o'clock. You guys rock. Thank you, Mario. Woo. And my beautiful wife, Britta Ann Reitman. Love you. <laughs> You are watching T-Radio V, radio and TV.